All right, next in the show right here, we're going to talk about engines, what you need to do to, a, to an engine to make it worthy of a supercharger and sort of withstand a supercharger. I mean, I talked about it before, you know, the idea of horsepower is to just fill the cylinder and create more pressure and it pushes the crank around harder. Blowers do that. Problem is it creates more strain. I think I talked about before, it's like a, a breaker bar with a socket. If that socket will take 200 pounds of pressure and you run it at 190 pounds or 195 pounds all day, sooner or later that thing's going to give. But if you only put 50 pounds of pressure on it, the thing will last forever. It's kind of the same thing with engine internals and blower motors and stuff. They're putting strain on parts. Now some guys will take a stock motor and put a blower on it, put five pounds of boost to it, and it'll run. It'll run okay. Um, won't last real long, but it, it'll run okay. The reason it won't last real long is because the internal parts aren't designed for the stresses that the blower is putting on it. If you run low amounts of boost, three to five pounds, they'll, they'll be all right. Start kicking the boost up, seven, eight, ten pounds, it's gonna, that, that stuff's not going to hold anymore. It's going to go. You need to get forged internals. And we're going to talk about all the different things you need to do a, to a motor and internals and stuff and cam profiles of what you want to do to make your, your engine uh, uh, compatible with a blower. We'll start off uh, just with some internals here. Uh, we'll start off with this first connecting rod. Now, in, in our other shows that, that we do on engines and, and strokers and building and stuff um, and rotating assemblies, we talk about pistons and rods and cranks and things like that. Um, and I'll tell you that 95% of the rods out there, actually about 98% of all connecting rods are forged. Okay, right from the factory, they're forged. There are a couple that are cast. This is a particular uh, one right here that is of cast iron. Um, this is a Pontiac rod. Uh, Oldsmobiles, Pontiacs, and Buicks, some of those had cast rods. And the way you can tell is when you look on the side, there's a very narrow parting line right here. Very narrow. That's right from the, uh, from the molds of where it was cast. Uh, and you can see it's very stippled looking. That's because it's cast iron. All right. You certainly do not want to run cast iron rods in a blown motor. They will break. Okay. Um, they're barely strong enough for anything. Uh, like I say, most factories went ahead and used a forged rod, including all the Fords and Chevys and, and most of the Chryslers. So we'll go to the next rod right here. This is a uh, early Chevy rod. It's been reworked, and I've heard. You, I'm sure you've heard people say, "Oh, I polished the beams." You know, and I've stress relieved my rods. These were Chevy pink rods, and they're stronger than a regular rod. Nope, Chevy pink rods. The only reason they're pink is because they were magnafluxed at the factory to check for cracks. It's still the same rod that any other motor had in it, any other Chevy motor, okay? Um, by polishing the beams right here, that does relieve stress risers and things like that, but the rod is still made out of the same material. It's not, uh, it's not any stronger, really. Uh, and really, the weak length of a connecting rod isn't the rod itself, it's the bolts. And whoever did these rods used factory bolts in them. They didn't even change the rod bolts. And the rod bolts are what breaks. When a rod bolt breaks, the cap comes off, the crank comes around, smacks it, and throws it right off the side of the block. Rods rarely break on the beams. All right, so you know, if, if you're building a motor, don't, don't settle for this kind of stuff, because that's old school stuff, and it really wasn't any better than factory stuff. If you're going to do something these days, you buy a set of aftermarket rods. These right here are forged 5140 steel. They're I-beams, they're lightweight, they're about half again as strong as a, as a stock rod, um, and they're lighter. If you notice, they use a through bolt. The bolt actually comes all the way through. Uh, rather than a, a stud and a nut, it's actually a through bolt. Um, they're big shoulders, um, great, great rod, very lightweight. These things will handle 500 horsepower all day, not a problem. Um, and they're inexpensive. By the time we work a set of uh, regular rods and put bolts in them and profile them and do all kinds of stuff and resize them, for a couple bucks more you can buy a brand new set of these. You might as well start, start good. If you're going to be in a hardcore stuff and the, uh, uh, the motor's going to make a lot more horsepower than, than 500 or 500 and up, you can opt for H-beam rods like this. This is a 4340 steel. It's a lot stronger than 5140. It's different alloys of steel. It also has cap screws that come all the way through. These are monsters.